Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew, your best source for the newest Atari games and the newest Erlen. <laughs> hey, <laughs> this folks. Is the newest, most up to date version of Erlen you're yeah, ever going to get. Erlen 3.0 <laughs> season. Yeah, Erlen's back for a show. Yeah, what season is this of the show? I mean, it how many years? It just never stops. Because <laughs> I, I kind of feel like the first year is season one, and then, like, yeah. how, how many years is this at this point? Well, I, I kind of would divide up the seasons by the Homebrew Awards. Yeah, that makes a lot of because sense. Because we usually take a break after the Homebrew Awards. Um, for like a couple weeks and then we start again and it's kind of a new season of games yeah right? a new make, year of games so this feel like the peak right it's kind of like <laughs> yeah, that's the, the season finale that. it is yeah there you go the big season finale so we're in year five if you can believe that year oh so five. season five man you made yeah. it you're farther than stranger things <laughs> that's right you're on the last season oh, of breaking time we've got something about that a little bit later oh shoot i've been I've, i'm up to date on that for me sure. too me too um we're gonna be playing three games today two of them are chess adjacent okay games. cool they're not chess okay we won't be playing chess <laughs> yeah they're chess-like. They're near chess. They have things related to chess. That's exciting. I, I have to say I haven't really kept up with my game as much. Yeah. I've been doing other things. and I, I mean, I think there's like a level of chess knowledge that will always be there, but it yes. definitely needs practice. And These it's... are just the basic moves, really. That sounds it's good. It's like if you know how to move all the pieces, you're fine. Okay, cool. So, even me, I'll probably be okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to be playing Fallen Kingdom on the Atari 8-bit computer, uh, Night Jumper 2K on the 2600, and also UFO Traffic okay, at cool. the end there, which has nothing to do with chess at all. It's good to, it was good to mix it up. I mean, a full-on, like, staring at horses. <laughs> all chess, and... all day. It's only knights and <laughs> night moves. Yeah, That'd be I, a bit much. I feel like the streamers who like are yeah, yeah, like amazing. Yeah, like the yeah. chess streamers are all just like. Thank you for following Matosimi, and that is the developer for the first game. Sorry, wow. I interrupted you. I was gonna say they're all like chess grandmasters who do like speed of chess course. with like one minute games, so that you just get to see all the stuff. Because most chess, chess, if you play it like with people, is kind of boring. It's like people staring at a board. So blitz chess and super fast people. Right, but, and, and especially if they can explain why they're doing the moves the history of those moves you yeah know, what they're thinking ahead if they're playing the computer if they're playing another person that's kind of giving it giving hits to the other person and yeah. on the other end and the, and it's weird it sort of intersects with all the sort of twitch stuff too of just like oh, poggers yeah. and like <laughs> sag and all the twitch like lexicon yes four uh four years of awards so yeah, yeah we do the fourth year now we're on year five of playing games yeah did you start with the awards in the first year yeah we did the whole we started in march or february and that's usually when the awards are then we did a whole year and then the awards yeah. were in february and so it like, actually worked out pretty good i feel like the first one was organic like it just sort of came to be and then there was it no was. expectation that this was going to be like a a thing that you do oh no which is like <laughs> a tremendous level of work organizing all of this stuff and then all of the awards and everything like that i mean you, you guys is. all know but it's just it's crazy yeah a lot of them are involved like yeah. a lot of these people have been on the the nomination committee so oh, they so. know exactly how much work is involved in it yeah, preaching to the choir <laughs> exactly. I, feel like, I feel like that's kind of the theme of the show almost is there the choirs the, here you know yeah because they're either the nomination committee or they're even the voters or they're watching the show and they know what's all involved in it uh, I want to thank all the Twitch subscribers scrolling down beside Erlen here. 8 Bit Swami, all the Firearms Card Coder, Atari 800 XL Rules, Atari 1974, Atari HBR Pocock, Buck Owens, Charles and Check, Charles Wheel, and Chai 5, Cuban is Omo, uh, Dianoi, Dan, if you see Drexel, Dr. Moo, Cows, Emmy, Dan, Fox Mulder, Great Defender, Orjur Rapper, uh, Ground Trooper, Johnny WC, Carl G, Ken Jennings, Invader, Kevlin, Buffalo, Kev Kelly, Lauren TDZ, Marco Johannes, Mark Basic, Militari, Mick Muse, Mike Soul, Mike Littell, Miss Command, Miss M MK Smith, Mr. Zarnwood, Miss Fix, Mighty Funston, Nathan Strong, Pack, RPG, Coog, RC70, Render Ghost, Brandless, Fiji, Ricardo Pim, Six Sweet, Sledge, Hammer, Smitty, B, Spartan 501, Spice, Ross, Ramirez, the D Train, Welsh Man 89, Tiki Dan K, Tifos, and X Ken X. Baby cats getting everywhere. If you want to support the show and get your name on the list and have me read it out at crazy speeds, you can subscribe. And uh, yeah, it's free if you have Amazon Prime. 
I, re I remember when um, there was like discussions of how are you going to display the names when they yeah. fill the screen, and then <laughs> yes. somebody at some point was like scrolling, and then you're like, oh. So I remember yeah. when there was like four names. Yeah, basically, it's incredible to, to yeah, see. Yeah, they were just growth. static names sitting, on just the hanging screen. out on like the right, and now it's like. Oh yeah, now it's a scrolly, scrolly list. Yeah, it's 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 getting bigger and bigger all the time. Fair call ZPH was February two thousand eighteen. Yes, and the first yeah. award show was January two thousand nineteen. Yeah, so we have the awards in January, February. It's taking a bit longer now. I think the first one was in January, but there's yeah. more categories, more and stuff more games, out. and more platforms that we uh, give awards to. So it yeah. takes a little bit longer. It's like mid February now. Uh, the poll question today Ooh. is related to not only video games, but movies as well. Big tie in there. And Stranger Things. But we'll get to the Stranger Things in oh, a bit. Oh, that's exciting. This is more a generic question, but it's specifically about uh, Stranger Things. How, d how do you feel when movies slash TV shows, not documentaries, get information about gaming wrong? Like, they just are just wrong like yeah. they didn't look into it at all like the simplest kind of stuff um so the options are let me post it um not important art isn't reality it's true yeah uh uh two pathetic they didn't even try that's also true <laughs> that's, also <very laughs> that's true. the thing both are true <laughs> uh no, and three, no strong feelings one way or the other. Oh, that's not a fun one. you got to pick one or two, <laughs> man. You, you gotta, really do. Like, And I think these people, the people that are watching will have a strong opinion because yeah. they know video games, and when they see one, like, every video game has, like, the Pac-Man sound. No matter if it's, yeah. like, from 1977 or if it's, like, 2022. It's like, yeah, we got to get that Pac-Man sound in here. Like, yeah, what? he's playing a first-person shooter. <laughs> I remember I had to do like in a movie, a characters were playing a game, and the sound yes. design, the background, and trying to figure no, out like what no, game they were playing no, and how to match it. Because you also have all the IP challenges of like, yeah, all these characters are owned by Thank companies. Thank you, Ground Trooper, for resubscribing. Forty-three months. Yeah, oh my God. and then it's a question of like, do you want the, to go through the legal clearance of getting this sort of name yes. and likeness, and then, but then it's kind of silly if you get. Like you know, like, I think that's part George of it. say saving Princess Apple. You're like, oh, this is what, what game is that? You know, and it's like pitch shifted all the stuff. Like it's it's really hard he's to do. One and two. That's not it. Oh, he's not that's my boy right there. Three or my, or my is, lady. Three is your aunt. Well, you you hate it and you don't care. Well, no. <laughs> Guess it depends. Not on the important, movie. but it's also pathetic. See, that's my answer. Uh, do you see not, what I mean? Uh, my uh, mine is it's pathetic yeah. it's like unless it's like no they can do research they can find out you can ask online you can find out quite easily yeah what, so what true. the answer is well I also if, if it's a if it's a, a fudge to make it work in the film then you just didn't you're not a good writer maybe it's See, like uh, i'd i'd say that like the devil's in the details because let's say it is a core part of the story like it's like this yes. narrative is this character is like a you know a professional video gamer or something it's like well okay that is beyond that's egregious pathetic because it's it's integral to the story it's part of the storyline people who are interested in that subject are going to watch it and are going to rake you off the coals. That's right, it. but if you're like dollying past and in the background, <laughs> slightly out of focus, is a guy playing a game like this, yeah. and you have to like pause it to like, I think it's like at that point you're like, well, you know, the extra on set didn't know what the fuck they were doing. Like, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's just a moment passing. So I think there's like a range yes. where it's like how, but as soon as, when you lean that dial towards like integral to the plot, yeah. then it's like, guys, you got to seriously, because I don't think, then you're not inside these characters and understanding and inhabiting the world as a, as a creator, you're just like being lazy. Yeah, it, it depends what when the mistake came into being and how integral it is to the story. Yeah, like you said, like if the mistake came into being on set and the actor has to hold a controller and say they're not a video game player. Yeah, and nobody on set is video game players and they're holding it upside down. Yeah, and it's like. Okay, sure. Yeah, uh, maybe you should have done some research. Maybe the the actor. It's like, oh, I have to hold a video game controller. What? 
what system yeah. is it? But a lot of actors just show up on set, read the lines that day, and go, okay, I got to do this yeah, and just do thing. it. And it, and it's not really their fault. It's the director at that point. It's like, oh, I've done my research. They should know everything about the film, including you know what video game they're playing, yeah. knowing that you know it's not even switched on, but you can hear the sounds, whatever. Yeah. Um, so before we get to why I brought that up, I will. Um, I hinted at this a little while ago. Uh, let's switch over to that. I will be a moderator for oh. a panel talk at the Vancouver Retro Gaming oh, Expo dude, that's coming awesome. up uh, next week. So this is on June 25th, Saturday, June 25th. It's in Vancouver. So if you're in the area, come on by. Yeah, absolutely. Tanya and I will be there. Um, we don't have like a booth or anything. Yeah, we're but not, you're gonna. We're not there as you know zero page and doing something as zero page. But we'll be there. Is Tanya gonna moderate as well or just yourself? No, no, no just that. That makes no. sense. That yeah, makes sense. yeah. Um, so it's. Uh, let's go to the event schedule. It is down right here. Homebrew game development. Yeah, of also, course. Th also, That's... this whole like deal seems like it's like if anyone's in Vancouver this oh yeah every part of this seems like it appeals to this audience like this 100 percent to... so even if you're like in Seattle maybe except for Portland? maybe Super Mario karaoke I can't say that I'm <laughs> super stoked for karaoke and even if you try to connect it to retro gaming I'm still not singing your karaoke songs <laughs> singing along with such classic hits as overworld theme underground theme underwater theme and more yeah so they're like making up lyrics I would that's be funny. that's actually my nightmare is karaoke I really, really I really get such a nervous sort of thing like any of those games you that wake you play, up in a cold sweat yeah like those, those, <gasps> somebody made me do karaoke oh my god like those games you play like socially and they're like so now we're gonna like do charades and act something out I'm like, I'm like <laughs> no 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 can, can we just hang out and I'll take the minus one points <laughs> I'm like I'm good man I don't wanna no sing your song and it's like I'm like I'm not and then people people who are good at karaoke are also a little obnoxious as well they're just like yeah. they're, they're just they're ready to show it off yeah and they always play like oh I've never done this before and then they're just like <laughs> belting it out yeah so it'll all be about uh, homebrew game development um, that we'll have like three or four for game developers we're just nailing down who they are mm -hmm. right now uh dj mips oh, uh, our own dj mips is going to be one of the panelists he's the guy who's kind of organizing this and i'll be uh you know uh corralling these people and keep them on target yeah. and on track and on time Stay on target yeah that's right Stay on target. so they're moderated by see my name's up there it's official <laughs> moderated by james earl o'brien host of zero page homebrew um, so that'll be a fun time. Yeah, that'll be awesome. Um, before that, I'll be looking around buying video games on the floor. Yeah, just enjoying the... Yeah, because there's lots of stuff to do. Like, uh, John Hancock's going to be there doing a panel. This it's going like to be... great stuff. It's going to be 8-bit uh, music, um, like chiptune music. It's going to be... I don't know why I always love the, like, vendor floor. Not necessarily the consumerism, but you just get to see, like products and things that you yeah. wouldn't normally you'd have to always do online you can get things in your hands and exactly I feel like that's also the most chill and you can kind of walk around whenever i've gone to things like this and so we always end up meeting the cool people is like yep. hanging out at the at the vendor area i'm sure there's going to be games you can play too i don't know oh yeah there's an area where you can play consoles there's usually a really good computer area too where you, they've got a bunch of really old computers set up you can tinker with them talk with the people it's it was a really fun time thing. Um, and it gets better and better every year. Costume contest, all the all the normal stuff, uh, free play gaming. Uh, they're gonna have arcade uh, cabinets there as well from Capital City Arcade, Ooh, which is our local up. amazing um, arcade. Um, but anyway, that'll be a fun time. So if you're in the area, I don't know if it's streamed. I'm not in charge of that. I'm not doing the streaming. I'm not personally streaming yeah. it. So um, I will be recording it if I can. I'll be asking it. I I don't know if I can, like, put it on my channel after it's not my thing. Yeah, I'm not organizing it. Uh, and we're so we'll like in in like 2022, we're just like everything streamed and all this stuff. But it's like actually, there's people who have to figure how out how to do all that the logistics. Stuff. And it's like, does it impact the event if you stream it? Will less people go? Yeah, they have to figure that out, and that's on them, really. Yeah. Um. So, uh, to the question at hand, um, now it's related to Stranger Things, this will have no spoilers. The, the thing in question about the video game in 
Stranger Things um, won't spoil anything. It has nothing, nothing to do with the plot yeah. whatsoever. So you don't have to worry about that. So in Stranger Things season four, the new season, episode six, there uh, they were referencing a secret American-made 16-bit console. Um, to compete with the NES. Oh yeah, it was like a. I remember this line. They were like, <laughs> and as soon as I heard it, I'm like, no, 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 no. This doesn't line up with reality and the timeline they exist in. I mean, it can, but it's so, so, so not going to. So I'm gonna play you the clip. Um, let me just. Of course, it totally forgot. No, oh, there we are. No, it's there. It's there. There we go. So I have to rewind this a little bit. So, just hold... Oh, it's a cool thing about Twitch, rather than YouTube, you can do stuff like this. Well, you can and you can, because I posted on YouTube. Um, and it's going to be a really short clip, so it's not going to be a big deal. Uh, okay, so I've got it there. I've unmuted it. And we'll go to it. So, it occurs at, I don't know, around the 36 minute mark. Um, so here it is. But seriously, it's 16 bits. 16 bits? Why have I never heard of it? Because it's top secret. Because that's why we're doing this. Yeah. So there it is. Okay. <laughs> so it's some 16 bit. She's, they're trying to convince her to do something uh, in the show. And they're like, oh, it's, we, if you do this, we can get this 60, new 16 bit console for. Uh, for our friend or whatever, right? And so I looked up the timeline of Stranger Things and somebody has made like day to day oh, yeah, exactly like... which days everything occurs on. Um, oh, they were lying to her. That's not, the, that's not the problem is that they were lying to her. They were. Um, so two days before, like this aired, I watched this two days ago, and a couple days before that I watched a video called, from from 8-Blit, called Atari 2600 is an 8-bit game console. And they explained that the average person uh, didn't refer to consoles as 16 and 8-bit until the Sega Genesis started marketing their console as 16-bit console. Before that, everybody was just like, it's a video game. They had no clue how many bits things were. Um, and also the Sega, Sega Genesis 16-bit, that has 16-bit, um, wasn't released in Japan until 1988. And this particular episode uh, took place on March 22nd, 1986. So um, like a year and a half before Sega Genesis was even released in Japan, let alone American marketing was done in the US. Um, so it was unlikely any of them would be aware of how many bits each system was or yeah. be able to compare it to, oh, the new one is 16-bit and the old ones are 8-bit. Um, so if you ignore the Intellivision with its 16-bit CPU, um, the first console of the 16-bit era was the PC Engine. Um, with a 16-bit GPU, uh, which was over a year and a half away still. And they, would, they wouldn't know anything about the Japanese PC Engine uh, at all. And so it's unlikely. Yeah, prior to Ivory Tower Collections. Prior to that, like you said, it was just Atari, Nintendo, Sega. No clue about 8-bits or anything like that. So it's super, super, super unlikely that they would ever reference 16-bit in 1986. Yeah. So I just felt that was really, really out of place. Yeah, uh, the TI computer was the first mentioning of 16-bit for me. Yeah, so people who are really, really into computers and consoles maybe would have known 16-bit um, at that time. But the average person, like in this universe, the kids, the newest console these kids have is an Atari. Yeah, so and they show not... it in the show. That's all they show. And even in season four, you can see an Atari on top of a computer. I've seen no other game consoles in the whole show except that Atari. Um, I mean, she has a computer, yeah, but it's going to be an 8-bit computer, right? So anyway, 
I'll, um, that's I, that's my. I'll tell you one thing. Ripe about that. One thing they got right and sort of wrong is the D and D stuff. There's the video. That's my world. Is I play lots of D and D and Riot. Yeah. And in their D and D, like the first section in this season where they play D and D, yeah. they um the actual like way Hellfire they're playing D and D yeah. feels a little funny. Like it, it wouldn't be like how you would really play D and D. And they have miniatures and things like that. And like yeah. it's it's sort of on the line. It's kind of like a cinematic representation. But what's very cool that but they some, did. Some people do play it that way. It's true. less rules. Like oh yeah, roll the dice. Uh, sometimes and yeah it's more about a story and interactive on a story level rather than hard rules yeah anyway, but okay. what is cool is they the thing that they're doing and this is where they did a little bit of research is i was lately i was doing tons of lore around reading about D D stuff because mm -hmm. i've run a campaign and so i'm like always trying to understand the history and the one of the most famous modules of D D is vecna lives and okay. vecna lives is actually wow. there was an initial module where vecna was killed and then in this one there's a moment in this in Vecna lives it's an advanced D&D module that was like written and basically they Vecna appears on the top of a kind of like like temple and it's a surprise mm. and basically it's a very huge moment in the kind of like advanced D&D writing world right. it's a very famous module and so they actually borrowed that moment so what's cool is they were the, the what they're referencing is a legit moment in sort of D&D lore right. so although the mechanics of it aren't Right, is very cool to see that they're like riffing off of one of the most original. I mean, Vecna is like the original, one of the original D and D villains, oh. and that module Vecna lives is like that moment that they sort of play in it is yeah. a, is a pinnacle moment, and he's impossible uh. to defeat. In that moment, you're supposed to be destroyed by him. So later in the campaign, you can kind of come back, but there's an opportunity right. to kill him in that moment if you're like juiced with your party. So, so for D and D geeks, that this season is like, whoa, yeah. yes. Awesome, right? So it's cool in that first yeah. episode. There's a, the moment in D and D. Although the kind of like mechanics of it are a little funny, yeah. it's cool they're riffing off of like a very legit module. So like that was from my sort of nerdy <laughs> world. I was I was super stoked to see that. And also like what was hilarious is in my campaign um, before any of the Stranger Things came out. I uh, just because it's the one of the Greyhawk evil guys. Vecna was this guy. So I I did all nice. this Vecna research. So and my and it came out. Yeah. Oh, like, you're like so my. My, my, like, I know all about this. Yeah, my <laughs> friends were so fucking stoked as soon as it came on because they're like, dude, that's wild that you were like doing all this stuff. Yeah. Um, but it's not, that's not like hipster of me. It's like that's like one Super of the common. Two of the most module. original. It's honestly like mind flares and Vecna. Like it's right. kind of like the, the cliche. They went, they went for the common uh, yeah. campaigns in it. So that that's cool anyway. I yeah. mean, that's what shows need to do. It's like, oh, we're going to go for the common things so that people are aware of it or some people are aware of it. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, so I did all this like research on on it was just consuming <laughs> all this Vecna stuff, which was the only reason why I knew that because I just watched like three videos on it and, and I was like, wow, that's so that's something that like they did kind of get right even though it's, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, that's my world of nerdiness. <laughs> this is nice. a different world. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, so we're going to dive into the first game, which is an Atari 8-bit game. Yeah, it's time to get on with the show. Sorry, guys. Oh, it's fine. Yammering on about the fucking D&D right, modules. Yeah. We're going to be playing Fallen Kingdom Ooh. by Martin uh, Simchek. Simchek? Uh, Matto Sima, Simi. Yeah. And they are in the chat because we saw them uh, follow. Um, so this was first posted August 18th, 2021 on SourceForge. Wow. Um, it was part of the ABBUC uh, competition in 2021. It came in second place. Uh, this build is from November 13th, 2021, 25K game. Let's turn this on and get that going. Uh, switch over to 8-bit. Oh, exciting. Profile three. There we go. So today's date at the top. Uh, profile three. Oh, the, the top one? Yep. Cool. It's been a while. It has. There you go. Fallen Load Kingdom. That up. And just hit this guy. Cool. By Martin. Oh, Martin. Oh, I see a king. Oh, bit of music. Okay. Uh, he's also done Laser Blaster, Monex, Light Up, Bell Jumper, Fireball, Hacksaw, mm. Hacksaw Deluxe, Roblox, 
Ridiculous Reality, Dynakill is unchanged, Zerius Defect, Zerius Defect XXL, Neba Zero, Threeplex, Corion, Sky Skyscraper, Citron, 3 Kilogram, B3, Cast the Fender, Laser Mania, Detonatonix, and so, Fallen Kingdom. So do you know the concept of this? So I'm a king, I'm assuming. So you are the blue. I'm the blue, okay. And what's the objective? To get the other opponent's piece by jumping on him. That The other opponent's piece does not move. Um, so go to the go to your piece, press on it. Those are the moves it can make. And there's gravity, so you have to navigate your way to the other piece. Oh, wow. moving whatever style of piece moves that piece does. Okay, I'm right now you're the king, but there will be other pieces that come into play later. Okay, okay. And there you go. Wow. Okay, interesting. And you'll have to use combinations as well. So, so you're always blue. So I'm always blue. Yeah. Oh. So now you're on level two. Got ourselves a rip. Um, so, puzzle game with chess pieces. Your task is to defeat the Red King by using your blue chess pieces. Each piece moves the same direction as classical chess. However, gravity applies after the move is oh, finished. Oh, dude, that's so cool. I mean, it's nice I know all like the, the, I know, like, the move sets. I think this would get real challenging at a certain point. Come on. Ouch. Ouch. Hmm. Um, use cursor to select the game piece. Possible moves are then marked by... Um, black dots on empty tiles. Change cursor position to tile target and select it to perform the move. Uh, note that some tiles do not get marked as possible moves. In advanced levels, there are additional elements like keys, locks, platforms, and buttons. Uh, game took second place in ABBUC so Software Contest 2021. However, version 1.1, which we're playing, uh, contains several fixes, keyboard controls, additional levels, and ending. Oh, do I get two? Yeah, so you have to use them in combination. Hmm. Remember, they, you have to be able to get one piece. You only need one piece to get over there. But which piece is it? Why do you have to click the piece first? Now you know why you have to click the piece first, because now there's two pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that makes said, a lot of sense. Yeah. Hmm. Still no right, sprite let icon. About, let me think about this one. This is Oh, sprite is, is interesting. off screen. I'm sure once we do the tree time, uh, we'll be able to see Mr. Sprite. There you go, now you got it. And it's cool because they can do their move, then gravity takes place. Yeah, it's cool. It takes a second to like wrap your brain around <laughs> to think like, what is this? Dude, the... it's chess plus gravity. And dude, right? once the horse kicks in. Oh, oh yep. Oh, cool. This... I, don't know, I don't know if I like... I played oh. through a couple levels on this. Cool. This this was a little challenging. Yeah, this is definitely to, tricky. For me to understand this I just have to wrap my brain around like what, what, our, what our plan is here. So you can use a joystick or WASD keys or arrow keys, uh, cursor control, fire, space, or return, um, escape or R, reset level, or you press the little thing at the bottom if you want to reset. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, this is interesting. This is like... I'm just wrapping my brain around this one. Yeah. Sorry, this might be like slow content. Let you do need all like, three pieces. To... It makes total sense. I'm trying yeah. to think of where I want my... Um... Ivory Tower Collection says, I see. So in this case, the rook has to be used first to provide a platform for the king piece to take out the other king. Yes, that is correct. Um, I think... I think I at least see like... Yeah, like so I think that this is the way to do this. Yeah. Where cuz yeah, we got to get here and then at least at least we we got oh shit. That, I fucked that up. <laughs> Maybe you can pretty much reset them. There we go. To almost anything. No, I got to be there. What am I doing? Not that this is it's easier to think about destination. Yeah, that's right. So, oh, I gotta be there. Yes, that's the way to do this. Yes, yes, yes. And you order... gotta get one through that passage. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. In order to be there, I gotta stack. Yep. Okay. So that's that's right. That's right. That's... There you go. Go to the right. What do I gotta do? And you get them above oh, that. Yeah, that's and right. Then you can get then through. Then I can fire up. Let's just like. Hmm. Can the runners change color below them, unlike in real chess? Uh, Can the runners change color below them? I kind of want to be. Not sure what that means. There. Line. 
There's no changing. Oh, changing Am color. I crazy to do this. Well, the um, the rook can change the color it's on because it falls. So if you fall above a dark one, I you can change like the rook's diagonal moves to dark. Yeah, because what do I what do I gotta? You gotta get the king up there. So you gotta get the rook on the beside the ledge. So you gotta move him over there. And then one more over to the right. Yeah, one. And get him all yeah, there you go. Okay. Now you can move that king. Boom, boom, boom. boom up. Boom. That makes sense. Oh yeah. And then, and then this, up. this guy goes here. But then he has another thing to do, so you have to get the the rook up above there again. That's, uh there. Yeah, that should be enough. Yep. Oh, we think right here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then move him again. That makes sense. Make, and he'll be another platform. And then, and then the king ah, can, cool. can jump over there. Yeah, this isn't too bad now. Oh, yeah, and then and goodbye, Rook. Rook yeah. isn't. He's, he's, he's done. He's, okay, he's okay. met his Well, use. yeah, that took a little bit of time to sort of wrap my brain around. Okay, this it's is. It's nighttime. Yeah, get ready. Now, this level, this is the last level I played myself before, like, before the show. This is more like a platformer, this level. Oh, you figured it out right away. <laughs> nice. Do a quick work of that. Sort of. You know your knights. <laughs> I do know my knights, but like... Ooh, two knights. But this is like, um, like, without a doubt, the hardest stuff to do. Now you're gonna have to... Uh, get one knight to help the other knight. I'm assuming. That can... Yeah, okay. I can make it over there. I think once you get one of the knights on the second left platform, I think then... Oh, you're, oh, you're not golden yet. No, and I might have... I don't think I've bricked anything yet. No. But, like, it doesn't seem... None of this seems optimum. Mm, I, yeah. Hmm. I'm just kind of fucking around. I don't think. Can't make it up there. No. Somehow you need to get that knight on that right hand platform. Let me think about best best practice. Yeah. So once we're over here, oh, I haven't bricked anything. It's mm. entirely possible I have. Maybe, but how do you get them to any of those? Maybe that... Now, the square on the right is too far to be useful. How do you get them on top? Like, I'm thinking one knight needs to be on top of the other on the left-hand column. Yeah, I'm just trying to How think. Get him there. Let's see. Maybe he needs to be... Oh, one of them needs to be in the middle. Hmm. Uh, do they fall after? Like yeah, if they you definitely move the, do. Like if you move one knight on top of the other and then you move one of the knights, like the bottom knight. Wait, wait, wait. If you move the bottom knight, does that top one fall? Yeah. It does. Oh, okay. Does. Let's see. Yeah, this is... I think maybe if you get one, like, on the top of the right-hand square... Into the center of the right most. That's what I'm thinking. Like, you get them, like, jumping off each other on the... Oh, yeah. You get one on the middle of the square. You get one on top of the right-hand column. Yep. Oh, I see. Like, and then you can go on one night on top of the other, and then you get to that top square. Uh, the middle. So I gotta, like, I gotta, so I gotta get somebody, one in here, yes, and then first. one in there. Cool. Yeah. Hi, yeah, I know you want treats. Got him in there one time. How did I do that last time? I'm trying to remember. Oh, he was near it. There he he was like below the square, one on top of the other, but below the square. Like, like there. Um, over a bit. Oh yeah, I gotta go one down. Yeah. 
There you go. There you go. Nice. Okay, now get that other knight on top of that one. And then you can get that knight on top of... Oh, get out, gun on top. Yeah. There we go. Ah, oh, Now okay. we got it. And now you gotta move that right-hand knight over to that top column. And then you're home free. Uh, yeah. There we go. Oh, thanks, chat. I wouldn't have done that without you. Yep. That is Ivory Tower Collections helping out. Thank Dude, you very much. Dude, chat is so much smarter than me. <laughs> Matt, no Matt Simi says, I don't want to spoil the game. I like to watch you struggle. It's the developer of the game. Appreciate that. Yeah. I'm curious what this business is well, like. You only have one, one guy, so it's not too bad. This is like little platforms he's got to make it up. Uh, yeah. I would go for the... Go for that platform, and then have him fall, and then he'll go over to that, and he'll go up, and then over. Yeah, that's, that's not, not too, too bad. bad. But I think he's done a very smart thing. I think thing. when it's two pieces is when it really breaks your brain. Yeah. <laughs> this is three pieces. Oh, God. Okay. So he's doing, like, this is what platforms are like. Here's an easy path. Then I'm going to make it complex with platforms. Ooh, can't get that guy out. Him. So I got to get somebody here. Yeah. That's 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 the dealio. That guy gets out pretty easy. Ugh, I feel like that I can brick that pretty easy. Oh yeah. Yeah, because um, if I drop him Ooh, here, yeah, don't go there. But this I can actually. Oh yeah, you can get him out. Okay. But I also can brick this um easy too, because if I go, where do I need to be? I need to like, I, okay, I actually need to be here. Is what I need. Um, okay. Okay, I see what I think I see what you, what you need to do. You need to get um the it's also in castle down as the last piece so we can go straight up, right? And oh how do you do that? Hmm. Anyway, you need to get the so I gotta use this castle. So I wanna be here. Um so I can go you can do 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 jumping like that. I can go. Oh, can I just go here, here, drop yep. down, yep. up? Cool. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So I was, I actually. Oh, uh, ITC, you can chime in when we're when we're stuck, when we're like, ah, I don't know what to do. There you go. Now you got him out. Nice. Now I just want to like, ooh, I can. Ooh, ooh. If you fall down there. I can brick this real easy. So I need um somebody there. Somebody there. that you want the rook where the king started from. Yes. And then you can just go and kill him. Right, so I gotta let go. Really, you're getting the rook to that pit is what you is what you want to end up with. Because that's the only thing yeah, that can okay, go okay. straight I think up. I'm, I think I'm actually doing this correctly. So then... Oh, uh, you want to get the king up there to help out, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What so I he want... just needs a, a, a helping boost. Yeah, so all I need is, like, there you go. here. Okay. Done. Yep. Done. May we'll see, we'll see. Now he just needs another little helping boost. Yeah, there you go. You got it. Oh, he needs to be blocked now. Does he hold up? Because if yes. I just go, if I just go here, I can kind of just fire up. He can't go there. He moves all the way. Oh, does he? No. Yeah, you can move just there. That's right. And then done. I'm thinking it's like, oh, he has yeah. to. Okay, he has okay. to move all the way. Oh, oh dude, welcome. <laughs> welcome. Welcome to hell. To the jungle. <laughs> welcome to the Holy pit. Holy fuck, dude. Okay. This looks like make a ladder. So let me see. So. Probably horse is what needs to do it, right? Because a horse... No, no, no. Ugh, I guess a horse... Oh. Can a horse do it? Let me think. Horse there can do it. Um, horse there can do it. So, yeah. So, i got to get the horse there. How many is this? One, two, three, four, five. Um, Don't those guys do diagonals? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so i got seven pieces. 
Um, but getting the horse up there will be interesting. No hints. I prefer to see them struggle. <laughs> Hilarious. Um, Couldn't the diagonal guys just take him out easily? Like, you just get one of the diagonal guys to drop on that, and then he goes all the way up there. Oh, then he can't attack him. That's right. So, like, right. I actually I actually think the way to do this is, I think the only way to do this is horse here. Um, so mm. That's my instinct, is yep. that we need a horse there. Can you build a tower? Getting yeah. a horse there. Yeah, you just need to build a tower here. of fire. But you have to get the horse up there, that's right. Oh, I guess the other deal is that it's entirely possible. None of us seem to quite figure out the sequence needed for the switches. Oh, yes, an update for that. Um, we played um, Escape from the Castle the other day. Uh, we found a uh, game-breaking bug that allowed us to get to the boss, but not allow us to defeat the boss. And the developer uh, messaged me after the show, and he said that, congratulations, you found the bug. <laughs> and that we could not physically defeat the boss because we got to the boss using the bug. Not that we were so useless. We didn't know how to defeat the boss. We were doing fine with that. Um, and that the switches were just in the wrong order. And so when we play it next, probably on an After Dark, we're going to record all the different switch combinations, of which there are only eight. And we will try them all and then note which is the right one and then figure out the game. And from there, you have to defeat the game ten times but you get, I think, less and less time each time you play through. So you just have to do it very, very fast. So um, so we found two bugs in the game. Both very uh, interesting bugs, actually. They don't crash the game. I think I this. Oh, you do? Nice. You just build a tower. So the knights weren't... Yeah, I, I kind of had to count it, and then I looked at it, and I was like, oh... Uh, we gotta get king, then rook, and then knights can jump uh, on top, and then bishops are easy. Yeah, um, yeah. They can go at the last. Oh, point. is this pawn? What is it? Oh, it must be pawns. They can do two moves for the first one. I just. But they can only go forward. Let me think about this. They can only go up. So that the pawns need to help at each stage. Okay, cool. So I'm assuming that this guy, the journey for this one is kind of like Oops. here, here, um, uh, drop down. This yes. pawn's here. Catch this. Exactly. Um, and so I'm just assuming that like I drop down. This guy goes here. Yep, yep, yep. This is like the intro to pawns level, what they can do. That's right. Okay, and this guy probably yeah. pops up there. Oh, shit. No, no, no. You're still good. Over, up, 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 mm. up, over. No, I think I need to... No, no. No, I think I think I'm pregnant. Oh. Yeah, yep. yeah. You did. Reset. Can I reset? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I just didn't... Yeah, it makes sense. Move too much. No, I just... Yeah, wrong order of operations. <laughs> Ped mass, remember. Or bed mass. Brackets. That's right. Um... What's the next one? <laughs> oh, dude, I don't even. <laughs> I don't know what they stand for. Okay, okay, okay. Good stuff. What's next? Nice. Oh, two pawns. Let me think. Let me think. Um, so I'm so guessing. What do you need to get? What's the last one to move? Sometimes you gotta work backwards, right? Yeah, I'm just trying to think like which one hits this. Um, I mean, Knight could hit it, potentially. I mean, it yeah. seems like quite the journey though. It is. Um, rook, it's kind of like, if we can get the Rook, like, 
on this line. That one is easy. Pawn reduces the number of combinations significantly. That's true. This they can is. only go straight up. Yeah, so if I can get the rook right here, mm -hmm. that's no problem. But the yes. only the only deal is that, like, um, how does he get up there? Mm. You know. And then Pong goes up here. There's some suspicious climbing blocks. It feels like a like a knight. Knight it's... is going to be jumping up the left hand side for a bit. It looks like. Yeah, and I just don't see how this rook plays into this business yet. Neither do I. Because um, I don't see a clean way to get the rook up. Are the pawns just to get out of the way so the rook can? I mean, this could... guy feels like that to me. I'm not going to do him yet. This guy feels like. I feel like it's kind of like pawn, knight, and then rook, but the deal there is like, how does the rook stand there? Mm. Uh -huh. Oh, probably with the knight and the pawn up there. Pawn, then the knight on top. Yeah, and I'm just thinking of how to get him there. So like... Let's check the pole before it disappears. Yeah. Uh, number two, the winner, 63% oh. pathetic. They didn't even try. I agree. And then number one is next. Not important. Art is in reality. And then a very small number of people voted for. No strong feelings either way. 9%. Back to the game, which looks exactly as it was before. Oh, perfect timing. You just started moving. I just thought I would just start playing and try some stuff. I think you're just doing it right. Just because I don't, I don't know if this is like what we're meant to do. Oh, there you go. Necessarily. Oh, and then... Here, at least. Yeah. I mean, I could be out of my mind. Maybe. I think you need the knight up there to, like, block or provide some sort of... Some sort um, of platform? Platform, yeah. And that he can land on it, and then he's home free to go over to the right. Oh, no. Honey. Hmm. But it's definitely... The knight needs to get up there. Right? Yeah, I'm just kind of messing around at the moment. And then he would I mean, go to that platform. Okay, sure. He can go anywhere, pretty much. Let's send him here for now, just so we don't block anything. Yeah. I mean, I may as well. Okay, and then... Hmm, so at least... He doesn't really have an option up there. Oh, okay. How does... That help. I think that's where you want it. Want the knight to be, but you need some something else needs to like needs to be in play. You know, like I just don't quite see it yet. Yeah. Um. I mean, Matosimi says this one is tricky. So the developer says this one's tricky. Right. We'll probably end on this one. Yeah, yeah, it's good because this is um this, this is, is good content. One. But the harder this gets, the more <laughs> it's just me staring at puzzles. I know puzzle. that's that's the problem with puzzle games. They're really fun, but yeah. um, but yeah, it's not necessarily the best content for Twitch, <laughs> is it? No. Um, and I might need a hint if I. For sure, the knight needs to end up on top of that pawn, so that it's a platform to get over. Maybe. I'm not even sure Honestly, about that. I might have bricked it because hey, if, pseudo graphics. If evening. the if the, the you might have if the um, knight were here, that would be like actually a lot nicer. Do you know what I mean? Because right now the pawn is here, yeah. so I actually think I need to reset this and try this again because sure. you um, moved the pawn too early. Yeah, because yeah. looking here, if the knight lands there, then he can go here, and I don't actually see Ooh. any other way to do it. So I'm just gonna do a quick reset, yeah. and we'll see. We'll see how I do. So I know this guy for sure goes here. Yeah. Um, this guy for sure goes here. Oh, um, okay. this guy goes here. I think I'll be able to quickly reset. Come on, yeah, because this can't get past. Can't get past. Can't get past the pawn? No. How did I get him up there last time? Did Oh, you must have gone around and over. Huh. How did how I moved How did I do it again? How did you do it? There's no clear path up to remember. land on. I can't remember. What did I do? Oh, you know what? You probably flipped places with the knight. How did I do this? Oh, damn it. I should have been paying more attention. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Hold up. 
Yeah, so I have to move this guy there. To get him out of the way. Yeah. Get him out. I've got to move this guy here, which feels right. I'm just curious. I don't think this is the way to do it. I think I, I'm missing a step. Um, that guy's stuck in the bottom now. He has no platforms to get to. Anywhere. I wish I could like review the tape and see like <laughs> rewind. See how I did it. Hold up, because I know I got him there at one point. I just started moving pieces. Yeah. No. Yeah, he has to get out of the way. Yeah, so this guy has gotta go there. How the hell did I do it? Does anyone remember? Left pawn more up? You what you did move him all the all the way up. Oh, that's how you did it. Wait, wait, wait. The rook can use those platforms to get over as you move that pawn up. Yes. That's how you did it. Yes, that makes sense. So that's the key. Okay, so this this pawn, I believe, has but to... maybe not all the way to the, the top. Oh, it's exactly right. That's exactly right. So this yeah. guy goes here. Thank you, This Thrust. guy goes here. This guy goes <gasps> here. Uh, yes. Um, and then uh, I gotta wait because I gotta get my knight in position. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks oh, Matt so me confirms. Yes, not all the way up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks, guys. That's actually really, 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 really good. Okay, so this guy goes here, and then now this guy can go on top to get him over on top. So because he needs to. This be goes there. here. This goes here. This goes here. This goes here. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, before we get too crazy. Go too wild. Okay. Now, how do you get the rook to a position where he can get over? Or even, how do you get him up? Good evening, Madame Masquerade. Thank you for joining us. We're doing well. We're almost there on this one. I think we're really close. We've got the right things in the right position. Um, so to, to, take, to hit this guy with the knight, I'd have to be here. Can you? Can you, Maybe it, that's all you need to do is use the knight now. I think, but I think I'd have to be here or here or here. Can you not get him in there and start? I mean, he falls is the problem. So here, here, oh. here. Like I just, I'm. He now, does fall. Now that I'm thinking about him, um, but I can kind of like. Oh, we're a good way to procrastinate. Here. Watching or listening to video game here, here. video games. Yeah, get up there. I can get him. But you can't get him past that. But you need to get him around. Something. Oh, don't worry, just proceed with the knight. Okay, cool. So I just hit here. Yeah, it must be some combination. Oh, you just need to touch him. Oh, it makes sense. You makes don't sense, need to move sense. on him like chess. Thanks, guys. You thanks, just guys. Need to touch him. Thanks so much. What's oh, the, I would do this one. It's only one. one? It's only the, one player. The queen. The queen. Oh, cool. So this guy can move. This woman can move. This lady. And this lady can move in any direction as far as you want. So it's going to be about using the platforms. Yeah, this yeah. is. This looks like a fun level. We won't. We'll do this one. Yeah. So. Uh, no. That's not going to get you up. It's not going to get you anywhere, is it? It's very, very blocked. Okay. You see it, there's gotta be a clear line. Move there, and then to there. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, and that'll get you up there. That'll get me That'll into... get over to the left. Which I can... Then you can get up to there. Here. And you can go all the way to... Okay, now it's... Wasn't it just here? Oh, there you go. I didn't see here, that path. Here, Boom. Whew. Okay, okay, okay. Nice. God, this is an addictive game. This is so much fun. <laughs> should we should we pause and do the this? Yeah, I think that was a good. That's a good ending point. I mean, I could freaking play this forever. It's, awesome. <laughs> it's really good.
It's yeah, really yeah. cool to take like the move set and sort of do like a spin on it. I like. Yeah, twist it and put it into a platformer. Dude, big thumbs up. It's, it's what a, a cool chess concept. Platformer. Yeah, and it also helps me. It helps you wrap your chest brain around things too. Yeah. Knights are the trickiest though. Like I just still yeah. like don't even don't even the, the move patterns of knights are wild. Like yeah. I was so scared because there's like all these like end game training things where it'll be like you'll have like a knight oh. and like a and like a king and then you'll have like a, maybe a pawn and then you have like another one and you have to like uh. use the knight to like and like end game knight movement <laughs> is like. So like, it's not straightforward. It's an entire yeah. like like way of having to think about it because like normally with the knight it's like you use it to pop around like a populated board. But right. at the end game when you only have like a knight upon and like it's a more king, open. it's and possible it's more to win. But like the you have to know how to move your knight and the patterns of it. And like I don't have that training <laughs> like this. Wow. This is like like grandmasters know how to like move knights in end game and like that's a whole deal. So. That was like I'm so happy that was. Yeah, that's oh, a great, God. great, great game, and yeah. you don't even need to know Ready. chess to play. You just need to know what characters move in different ways, and they yeah. could be, they could look like anything. They just happen to look like chess pieces. Right? There's something about like the, just the beauty of just the chess movement patterns of these characters. Like the simplicity of that is just like so robust and yeah. Thank you, Matt Osimi, for making that amazing yeah, man, game. That you was... can see why it came in second place in the contest. It's Dude, honestly, so, so big good. thumbs up. And anything that's a riff on chess, I'm such a fan of, because it's like, you know it, but you don't know it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, so it is time for uh, an, the second chess-related game. Cool. Uh, it's called Night Jumper, so it's only knights. Oh shit! See, this is like I said. <laughs> it's the follow up. The, it's the nightmare. I mean, it's so smart. It's so good for your brain to learn a night play, right? Yeah. Honestly, a lot of like players, the suggestion is to just like lose all your knights because they're not great in end game. Oh, poor little sprite is over there, passed hey, out. Hey, Anybody want to do treat time right now before we jump into this game? Uh, this is Night Jumper 2K by Zach Matley, uh, known as Zach. Oh, in different oh, joystick, yeah, of course. I'm not still connected to the other control uh, games. That makes so much sense. Which one do I do? I'm it's so treat rusty. Time. Yum, 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 oh. Yum. oh, Sprite woke up. He knows now. He knows. Okay, here we go. Can you ring the bell, Sprite? It's treat time. Who trigger treat time? Oh, Every tower what a cute collection. Sound that comes from you. Oh, Sprite. super squeaky! Yay! Hey, tower. Good job. Here's one for you. Oops. Hey, you just kicked it. Oh, I know. The little black cat dives for the food. He knows what's up. Oh, Jesse beat. Beat Dan. Dan was gonna do it. So you really have to feed um, Sprite first. Makes sense. Because Sprite will just... Oh, he's looking at the bell. Ninja he's mode. He's associating it. It's this. Sprite. Bring the bell. Bring it. Bring it. Bring it. Oh, uh, no. Nah. I need a couple. A couple. <laughs> Go. So you got... That's the tactic. Give it to Sprite first. And then Atari. Dude, what Sprite's learning is just and wait Atari's till... like, no, I'm I'm taking it away. Sprite's like, let's just wait till Atari rings this bell. Yeah, that's that's was that's what uh, Pixel's uh, strategy was too. It's like, yeah, let that gray cat do the work. Yeah, it's like, oh. and it's same with like feeding mm. them food too. We have to feed Sprite first because otherwise Sprite will go to Atari's bowl and they have different food. And he'll just eat Atari's food, and Atari will be like, whatever, I'm, yeah. leaving. I'm leaving. Because it's just too much. He's like, oh, the little kitten needs to f have some food. Come on, ding the I bell. Really, I've he's been, kind of looking at it, he's understanding. He's sort of learning. He's, he's sniffing it. He's still, and he's a, like, he's still a baby. He's yeah. still figuring it out. One more. There you go. I really enjoyed this new season of Stranger Things, though. I quite enjoyed the... Yeah, I, I like it better than the last season. The first two episodes I was not vibing with it yeah, and like, then and then once the plot kicked in it was like I was sort of so in but I've been watching lots of like trash TV so it's been like <laughs> it was such a nice break to just watch something that's just like you know and to, the, to get the references of Nightmare on, on Elm Street and having Robert England in it and Carrie and like yes there's, there's a lot going on I, I, I'm not too 
enthralled with all of Eleven's stuff in it. It's like, okay, yeah, I get it. Can you speed it up a bit? The the show is kind of the the, but the rest same. of the characters great, but that yeah. plot line is like you could have condensed that into like two episodes. Yeah, her her plot line and get her back into the world, but it's not giving away. I'm trying to not give away spoilers. Yeah, yeah. but I really enjoyed it. Like I've just been like I yeah I, I binge watched it. I think this last week and yeah. it took me a little bit, but once I was in, I was in and and kind of smart the way they released it. It's like we're gonna release most of the episodes, but not the finish of it. Yeah, well apparently, um, what the reasoning behind that was is they have so much VFX work oh. in these next two episodes. Apparently, they said they have more VFX shots in the next two episodes than all four seasons combined. That might be good or bad. <laughs> and they were just like, we don't have like the capacity to get this done on time because. Uh, um, okay. And so they needed the extra month to basically do all the VFX, which. Uh, yeah, in this kind of show and the way it's going, I can see why. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of VFX. So this is made by Zach Matley um, around August 2006. It was in a mini game 2006 competition. Came in 13th. It was a 1K version, so you can go to the date. Uh, this one right yep. here? Cool. That's today's Night Jumper. Night Jumper. Oh, God. Uh, First other one games or second one? I, sorry. I'm oh, s- that's the director at the top, so go down. Sorry, I'm there still thrusty. I don't remember. Okay. Oh, what? Um... <laughs> so you'll, you'll figure it out in a second. Um, you s- start with any of those blocks. So you go over top of one. Doesn't matter which one you start with. And you cl- press the button. Doesn't seem to... There oh, you go. oh, I see. And you do night moves, and you have to use up all of them. There you go. Oh, don't press a button. You just move. Oh, okay. Yeah. Button resets the level. ITC, never watched Stranger Things. I think any anybody who grew up in the... Um, in the 80s, 70s, 80s, I think would get enough enjoyment out of it. There's nostalgia without being in your face. Unfortunately, you have to press the level select to go to the next one. And because you have to traverse every block, it doesn't matter which block you start on. Uh, Done. Yeah. He also made uh, Chattery, which I'm pronouncing wrong every time. Four play, go, night jumper, marble jumper, Marble Solitaire, Ram Sliding Puzzle, Ram Tic-Tac-Toe, Super Portals 3D, Super 3D Portal 6, which we played on the show, Tank AI, Top Gun, Toy Shop Trouble. Um, a lot of board games. He likes converting board games or board-like games. Oh, cool. See, look at this little black cat. He's sitting with us. I got up, so I disturbed him. He looks like some odd timing glitch that might, may only be a thing on an RGB board. Yes. I know there's a little bit of shadowing and and weirdness going on on this game. I th- I think it is the RGB. Well, I think it, I broke this one already. Uh, yeah. Press the button to reset. So um. In uh, the mini game 1K okay, competition, cool. hey, uh, this it. came do in. Do you want to do the next one? Oh no, no, I played all these. No, no I mean, do you... oh sorry, <laughs> I already did the. Um, and uh, in that competition, Thomas Yench came in first place with Robot City 1K. Um, so the comments on this game from the competition. Remember, this isn't this version of it. Oh, did you finish? No, no I failed. Uh. Uh, Thrust said, not exactly a game. Got down to five fields missing. Is that good? Graphics are okay. No sound, though. So it's not talking about this version. Talking about the 1K version. So he added sounds. And the 1K version was a full board. Like 100% board. 8x8. Cool. How many are there? Uh, 32. Holy Holy shit. Okay. And they get bigger and bigger. You said you beat all of them? Uh, no. I just played, um, probably up to the last level. Not this one. Um, Shit. Okay. He said, this, and uh, okay. the next person said, "It is boring, at least for me. And what is worse, moving the knight around the board is not is done in not the best way. Uh, night is nice implementation. Sound sound pitch is motivating. Oh, that's weird. Somebody said the sound is motivating, and Thomas said there's no sound. Weird. 
Uh, a little more fun no than poop. it sounds. I suck at it though, Cyber God said. Very nice, ni very oh, nice though. It. Concept is a bit shallow. All in all, nice puzzler, complete with sounds, intuitive controls, nice graphics. V Dub Bobby. And Matt B said, not a bad implementation. The control of the piece and the graphics are nicely done. However, it's neither particularly original or exciting. And then the developer said, overall, I thought the comments from the 2006 1K competitions were fair. <laughs> were brutal. <laughs> were brutal. <laughs> it was like, they I were. hate your game. Oh. <laughs> uh, the addition of new puzzles should significantly improve gameplay. And that's what we're playing now. Note that all the puzzles can be solved from any starting square. Also, the first puzzle is just a warm up. If you keep moving, you can't lose. If you're new to Night Jumper, uh, the object of the puzzle is to guide your chess knight across the board, touching each square exactly once. Just a little bit loud here. So you guys get echoes, unfortunately. Brick! Oh, you bricked it? Oh, yeah. Yep. Button! Oh, you didn't. There you go. Uh, First, move the knight to the starting square of your choice, and then press the fire button to begin. From then on, just move the knight to the next square. You can fire to undo most of the, re the most recent move, except at the end of the game. When the game is over, you can reset, which with the fire button, you select and reset for obvious purposes. It's nearly finished, with just a couple of details to take care of. Um, so, you obviously made the button reset the whole level instead of one move. No, it is not couch compliant. No such thing back in 2006. No! Yeah, definitely the edge you want to start with, I think. And take the edges out when you get to them. And I found doing... kind of cleaning up corners first, because you can't really get back to them after you've left Makes them. a lot of sense, yeah. Yeah. And kind of like hitting. Yeah. Once you got the corners, that's, that's good. I don't know if I got... I think this Not is a lot bricked. of centers left. Oh, maybe. No, I don't think I can. Ooh, it's damn it! I would have gone lower right first. No. Eh. Some games back in the day, I believe, had the fire button start and restart on games. Yeah, uh, some of them did. Most did not. Most were like, "There's a game reset switch for a reason." Thrust says this version is much better than the 1K I remember. Yeah, the 1K I loaded it up, it was the full 8x8 board. Oh, and, uh, no, not necessarily. No. And you had to clear the whole board. And that was the whole game. I mean, it was only 1K, so there wasn't a lot of room to do much else. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you can do it. Nice. Oh, no. Nope. Ah, damn it. Really good. It's hard. I have to have a strategy. I feel like I'm a little bit just kind of randomly hitting it, you know? Yeah. Which doesn't yeah, feel like the way. getting more strategic now. I mean, I think that, like, if I were, like, ugh, smarter about this, um, I, there, there is, without a doubt, a strategy to like um let me load it up and see if i've sound it's gonna load it up on emulator here yep sound you heard that no, i think i'm done no I'm not just nice. playing it on stella and another window here yeah there is sound it's weird that you didn't have sound thomas Yes, 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 yes! Nice! <sighs> and we'll end on that, probably. Yeah, yeah, it's a good <laughs> end. It's a brutal, brutal game. It gets harder and harder. <laughs> I mean, I think that, like, uh, like my brain, I need to wrap my brain around it, but I think that there definitely has some strategy to, like, um, clearing whites and blacks uh, first. We're playing 2,600 games. That's not straight. Oh, no. There we go. Okay, so the next game is... Let me change the cartridge. Boom. 
It's not chess related at all. That's okay. <laughs> it is called uh, UFO Traffic. So go to the date uh, by Ford Apocalypse. Uh, first post of February 9th, 2008. Yep. Cool. And this build is from February 28th, 2008. Now, there are no instructions for this game, so have at it. I do know how to play, but there's no instructions posted. Do I like. Take him out. You can steer the ship too. Oh, shit. That one takes a couple shots, I believe. Oh, no. Uh, other games I made. Uh, Deep Sea Explorer, Delta Force Sniper, Double Click Draw, Happy Bear Smackdown, Happy Easter, Insane Painter, School Bus, oh, Titan Diamond. Oh, so, in that instance, you're, UFO track. you're not supposed to hit them? Uh, yeah, you're supposed to make your way through them like Frogger. I can't say I'm a good Frogger player, but... I'll give you some more practice. I'll try. And they get lower and lower. There you go. Uh, and Water Skier. You can download this in the Atari Age forums, just like the other games. Um, it's kind of a mix between um, Frogger, this level, and uh, Atlantis, which is this level. Kind of Atlantis? Kind of a, like a lot of games. I think we could let you play soon. <laughs> I feel like I've been hogging this friggin' remote. Oh, totally fine. If I die, I'll let you play next. Okay. So I can have a... Oh, that needs a bunch of shots. Now, this game is a work in progress from 2008. Uh -oh, it wasn't uh -oh, finished. Uh -oh, oh, uh -oh. you gotta get some shots in. Oh, you're dead. Brick! Run! <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, you have another life. Okay. So always go for the lowest one first. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Because that's the most dangerous. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if I should like increase my volume of shooting because I am like kind of taking my time but at the same time I'm also yeah. like also, like just keep firing and then aiming yeah but I also like I think when someone gets something gets too close oh boy oh you're dead again does it does he can he fly straight into me no fuck I think that's it okay cool Do you, yeah here you go not couch compliant! Oh. oh, no fun. Oh, making me get up. Okay. Yeah, so one of the, like, um, things that's happening in, like, my gaming world is oh, yeah. my favorite, like, one of my favorite games growing up was Diablo. Right. And they just released a mobile game um, <laughs> called Diablo Immortal, yeah. which might actually be one of the most vicious pay-to-win <laughs> scams that, that, like, we've experienced. A the, mobile game, you say? The Being Metacritic score on it is, like, 0. 0.4. <laughs> oh, my Or something goodness. like that, because it's, like, the, essentially, like, in order, there's a, there's a streamer right now by the name of uh, Quinn69, which I mean, like, uh -huh. but he's, like, one of the top ARPG streamers, and his idea was, there's, like, this thing called a five, like, five out of five gem, which is, like, the end game thing, yeah. so he's, like, in order to farm them, you need to, like, run these rifts, which cost, like, $25 each time, oh so in order God. to max out the game, and he currently, just for his, like, Twitch adventures, he was, like, I'll keep buying rifts until I get a five out of five gem, <laughs> and he's currently on $20,000. Oh my and so, God. like, it's really wild because it's just illuminating, at least to my mind, like, how much the mobile market is kind of, like, it's just wild to think, because the game got 0 0.5 on Metacritic, but, like, made, like, something like $8 million on release, and really it's just sort of this, like, and the thing they found is they looked at it and, like, this is essentially a loot box, but you have, like, a level you play, so it doesn't categorize itself as gambling, but ultimately you're giving them money for them to give you back things, Yes. and so so yeah, it's been really like kind of sad to see just this like IP that I loved growing up sort of descend into this. Off, 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 off. Sorry. And I was doing a little bit more research on just like what oh, God. The, the 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 kind of modern like kind of like 
landscape of, of monetizing games are. And I think in 2021, they estimated that like 52% of like the money that came from the entire gaming industry was mobile. Oh my God. And, and then, and then PC and sort of console split that like 25, 25, like 30, 20, like, but, but the mobile market is more, is basically half of it. Yep. And the level of like artistry and production that goes into that is, is much lower than, well, it's just not lower, it's just a different model. Yeah. And one of the guys um, who I was listening to talked about he used to work in the gaming industry and he said basically like, at a certain point, all of his- Why'd I die? Yeah, that's, that's ridiculous. <laughs> what the hell? Um, he, he said just like- um, What's the fun if you can buy winning? Exactly. And the only way you can win is if you buy. Like he's demonstrating that. This right? is 100% the case. So he's saying, you cannot win this game unless you invest more than 25,000 because he's not even done you said, No, right? you need to get six five out of five gems to be the highest level. And what's he at? And five? he hasn't gotten one yet and he spent $20,000. And so they estimated you need to spend about $100,000 to min-max the game and and it's been banned in a few different countries now <laughs> because they've just, I think Australia has gone like, this is just it's egregious. Not... And this is Blizzard Entertainment. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like to think that Blizzard, like World of Warcraft, Starcraft, Diablo, like Overwatch, like they basically have gone into this mobile market and it works right but and do you think they have an obligation to say like be up front and say to win you need to get these things and these things will cost you x dollars like yeah. this game will cost you a hundred thousand dollars to win yeah and it's it is, yeah of and, course. and there's a pvp component to it and what's yeah. weird is that and if you run a rift and there's someone in the rift who doesn't have um, the kind of haven't spent the twenty five dollars, the the entire team oh the entire team can't get runes, which is one of these like kind of end game currencies. Okay. So basically, it it encourages like for group play to kick out anyone who's not spending twenty five dollars. Right. So oh like God. if you want to like play it, you at, at like the higher level, you yeah. everyone needs to be spending. Uh, oh no, I can't. Everyone needs to be spending their money oh i got it what that's weird that's so wild oh, that's um, good. but one of the guys i was listening to talked about yeah. working in the gaming industry and he said like he started out working and you would kind of like there'd be all these like project developers who would go like yeah we really want to make a great game and all this stuff and they said after about a week or two they'd get fired and someone from vegas and the gaming board would come in and go oh my so god here's how we're going to like get this we have this currency and so much of these like mobile um games are basically getting experts from uh, of Vegas and gambling and trying to use these well okay, we'll have flashing lights, we'll use these all these techniques to sort of They're make money. Um and it's just sad to think that that's kind of what like um uh the gaming market has turned into. It's not entirely the way that we're always gonna have good games coming out, but it's just this wild new thing and I I I, I, I mean there's always been pay to win stuff, but it's just wild and sad to me to see sort of Blizzard entertainment. But um I mean Blizzard had in the last year all the like horrible accounts of how they were like treating their staff internally like there was right. a whole bunch of stuff so it's just it's just a maybe a, a bad company but at this point but it's uh but yeah i just i i wanted to bring that up because it just it popped up in my in my mind and it just made me think about all the guys here who are just making games for fun and yeah. just like actually this sort of the spirit of just like gamers just playing games like it's just wild to think that we've reached this weird consumerist point where like 50 percent of the game market is mobile yeah, and and the and the and the kind of development that you'd go from like a a gaming point of view, it's kind of like well, if you can make more money, essentially employing gambling tactics rather than sort of writing a story and thinking about gameplay, and it just kind of feels like company first rather than. Um, I mean, it, companies are that way, especially if they're publicly traded. Their their obligation is to make as much money as possible for their shareholders. Yeah. And um, otherwise, their shareholders make decisions to make more money, and they'll fire whoever's not making the money. And there's and there, there's a and there's a line I think between a free to play game that offers you to spend money for things like cosmetics or some basic quality of life improvements, but when you literally are gated behind content without being paid. Oh Damn it. It's like, it's just brutal, man. Uh, yeah, and the problem is that these games succeed. Yeah, like, financially, right? People may even be aware that um, that their odds are impossible to win the game. 
they're just fun playing at whatever level they're playing at, but they're spending way more money than they're getting enjoyment out of it. Or are they? And I think it's something... Like, they um, are getting enjoyment out of it it's, in some level. Or addictiveness. It's That's all, the problem. It's also something we need to figure out because, um, like, if you were to take a 12-year-old and bring them to, um, uh, you know, Vegas or a casino, it's illegal. Like, yes. You can't do that. But, but a mobile uh, game... There's no pay, uh, money payout. That's the difference. That, that's exactly the Which difference. seems worse that you don't... There's no chance of getting money back after investing $25,000 to not even win the game. Yeah, and like... Um, oh, and God. it's just kind of like... You know, I just... It makes me like miss the days where you just buy a CD and like you yeah, have a game. You know, it's like... Exactly. You just you just get... Like you just buy a cartridge. And that's, that's why I... Um, buy games from places like limited run where it's like we waited till all the dlc is done we put it all on a disc it doesn't connect up to the internet yeah you pay and you get the full game yeah the e in the eu regulations regarding loot box have started i think that's really important i got no issue if an adult wants to spend money on a video game like that you know what i mean if someone if if, if they decide yeah. that that's like what they want to do but i think the challenge with these things is like um targeting kids and twitch um and uh and, and twitch is like I think obviously this demographic is is older, but uh, if we were to look at like the Twitch Dead. demographics, it's a lot of younger. Um, the other thing too is like um, XQC, who's like a pretty popular streamer, has also like a huge component of his stream is turned into sort of just gambling. <laughs> yeah. It's just interesting that there's been this rise of, and I think gambling connected to video games has always been like a factor, like RNG for dropping items yes. and like but you kill a monster and you get a thing, but to monetize that in a predatory way like it's it's just this weird new thing um and the money the money dictates the market and i just i'd love to see like another elder scrolls game where we get to like have another skyrim or something but it just doesn't seem yeah. like that's as like that model of like let's hire god. like armies of artists and writers to create content it's kind of like well oh god damn. like why would we invest in that when we can go over here and sort of like oh yeah you know essentially for what incentive for the companies is to not do this model when they can make millions and millions and millions there's and, zero and i don't want to underplay the like amount of like obviously work that goes into that like oh, you, sure. making there's any artistry games. there's clever programming and there's but even I, you can see the artistry in the scam yeah but it's if, like wow they've done it so well but like if your entire like plan is how can we get the most money out of someone because it's that thing where like you buy a game for let's say eighty dollars which is an expensive game on release yeah. um you've made 80 bucks but if you can get someone to spend a dollar a hundred times yeah you know you've made twenty dollars more and it's like i mean it is it is and isn't the gamers these the it is the gamers because they're paying they know they're paying they know mm -hmm. how much they're paying but on the other hand, there's experts at gambling. There's experts at psychology that are that know exactly what buttons, like literal bush, buttons to push in their brains yeah. to make them come back over and over again. It's like, oh, you've got five out of six of blah. If you play one more hour, you get six out of six and you get this. And it's like, yeah. if you pay one more dollar or you, you get a deal if you buy five of them. It's like, oh my God. And so it's like these people know how to trick people who are susceptible to gambling addiction. And I and 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 I think the other issue here is 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 children. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you're 12, 13, 14, um even, you know, even 16, it's kind of like you know, what you the argument I guess is they wouldn't have as much money. Um, yeah. But but then the question becomes if you're building this habit for like a 16, 17 year old and this is something that is like ingrained into them, like it's not I don't know, I like, I I got yeah, it's 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 interesting. I don't, are they still are streamers still like um there on the back end and the front end it's like oh yeah we're we're playing this new cool game and and meanwhile they have 10 percent interest in the company yeah it's because that was a big scandal like about a, a couple of years ago it's like oh yeah we're gonna play this new cool game and it's like this huge twitch streamer and they're actually being paid to um play the game they're invested in the company um, and also they are, they've got 
the odds. Uh, it's broken. This game's... Oh, oh, there we go. And they've got the odds cranked up so they win more. Um, that was quite a scandal a couple years ago. Yeah, they, what, they call it um, streamer RNG. Yes, <laughs> yes. the joke. Oh, it did so well. Oh, my wow. God. Imagine. You guys should play this game. I'm getting such great loot. Part of um, streamer RNG is that, like, on one level, there is the sort of, like, the, the, the mysticism of that. But it's also the other thing of, like, if someone is God, gaming, like, eight hours a day, 12 hours a day for months, and then you watch their highlight reel, it's like... <laughs> Yeah, you're gonna see the 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 successes because they've just the time what? investment. Guys, I'm invincible. Yeah, I hit him like guys. ten times. You almost need to target that guy. That guy's always the guy that fucks yeah. you up. It almost, I think that's a tactic to this game. Um, but no, if you're interested in like um, hearing more about what I'm talking about, the game's Diablo Immortal, and there's tons oh, of YouTube yeah. videos about it. That I'm people so interested in and, that. And there's a lot of people who will break down the models that they use and go through it. It's really it was, and I think to me the only reason why I bring it to you guys is that there's been so many pay to win games like whatever yeah but this is blizzard entertainment you know what i mean this is used to be the gold standard of um game development and it's just in some ways it might just be the you know blizzard kind of might be just the end of a developer in a way like that right, might also break down of that might be more last, of what's yeah. happening and it's kind of like ah you know if we were like mid 2000s late that, 2000s it's like this would be like the gold standard of that that is kind of a tactic for companies they start off great everything's wonderful and free even or um the products are great it's very affordable and then another company invests a bunch in it and they wring it dry yeah and the they people... take their good name they drag it through the mud and um at the end there's nothing but a husk of the company it's kind of what is it it's like there's that old parable of like a ship goes out to sea and like every board is kind of oh, like yeah. repaired and eventually by the end um all the boards are uh, different. different and is it the same ship and you know when you look at a company and it's, it's like not. it's like it's like if it's just the name that is left that's like, it yeah like none of the people who wrote and uh, creatively directed the games that that I really responded to growing up work at the company anymore so it, it is that question where it's like you know shame ship on shame on me on some level ship of thesis there we go ship of thesis you guys know what's up oh yeah that's, that's a that. really well known fable um, but yeah I just is is uh, that was something that happened in my world that I thought was very interesting um, to, to, oh, yeah. to see happen. And and sad, too, because then you're like, well, this company, does, I'm not going to trust this company anymore to, yeah. to, to buy their products. And it's also, it like, takes all these characters that you, like, grew up with, and it's like, <laughs> look at them, they're here. Oh, you know, all of the things you love. Look at this, and it's just, it's, I feel like lately in the year uh, that we're in, <laughs> we're just watching, like, IPs that we used to love just, just to being monetized. <laughs> to, oh, it's sold so to hard. us like crazy. Oh, yeah. And and it works, so it's very you very know, sad. So, so, but I'm but I'm I'm like uh, happy to be here, and I also like the thing that that a reason like to bring it back to this is it's just cool to see people just just making games, you know. Like it's probably like akin to a certain generation watching the heroes that they watched on TV selling them reverse mortgages. Yep. Right? It's like, oh, he was such a good guy and now he's trying to scam me out of my house. Yeah, Hulk Hogan is <laughs> fucking <laughs> hustling. Yeah. And hey, that's, brother. <laughs> that's what happens. They, the People and companies take their names and they, at a certain point, they just wring it dry because they can. Oh, this ship. It's, it's that ship, when you get to the ender levels, you almost need to just. Like, I can't beat three thousand. Yeah. I can't get past this, but that's it is the, a work in progress. That's the, um, but good game. It just needs a little bit of tweaking. Yeah, uh, really nice game. Level uh, balancing, um, difficulty balancing. Um, I like the the change up of the two different levels. It need does need a pause after because it doubles the frogger sometimes. Yeah. And it doesn't pause, so when you're cranking it forward at the end, you just run into the ship at the bottom again. So a couple tweaks, and this would be like a really, yeah. really fun game. Like there's, 
I swear those are impossible. Some of them. What's have cool to have the infinite. two? It's kind of two games in one, right? Like, yeah. I, you could totally just make a game that's one of either one of these things and have that be the whole game. So it's really nice to have the break of the checkerboard of kind of like you hit these things with your ship, and yeah. then you do the Frogger sort of like style, and it's like you get you kind of get in the groove for one, and yes. then you're like, oh, gotta do this other one. Switch and, my brain over. Which is a nice sort of formula to sort of have a you know to sort of balance between the two because I could totally see someone just developing a game that's just one or the other yeah. and that being all the levels yeah and both games are fun on their own but together it just raises yeah. it up ford apocalypse is still an active developer and this one is not done so still in progress not really still in progress but it is not finished so it's still yeah. a work in progress so maybe maybe he'll see this and and get some ideas huh? oh Sorry. hey buddy he was sleeping i guess I'm waking, waking up for me um but uh super fun games today yeah man i'd say that like um to me hands down fallen kingdom was just took the took yeah. my favorite game of the day um yeah. all the games were great but that one in particular just sort of taking um chess movements yeah. applying it to this puzzle having gravity yes also really satisfying when you solve it like that last <laughs> level like, and oh like, yeah that's how you do it oh so and obvious and right? not the not the best content for for twitch i appreciate you programming it though just to be able to like yeah. it's hard to, it's hard to do games like this it's like it's, it's it's like the faster paced ones are just like it's better content for yeah. for them but you, you but. just have to, I've, I've learned you do enough to show the game yeah you don't take it too long they can play it on their own afterwards yeah and we can too uh, and you just do enough that you don't get to sit there and you stare at the screen once yeah. you sit there and stare at the screen time to move on yeah, it's time to get get out of here but i think that's like one of those perfect i mean if i had that on my phone like that game oh, yeah, i'd be playing yeah. that like on the bus i'd be like doing a new one and, and you, if like, you oh, try keep trying the next level like, next level honestly yeah. you almost couldn't have too much content for that if someone said you there's a thousand levels of this do you want to just play through them i'd be like fuck yeah and i would just i'd like whenever i'd have a yeah. minute or two i'd look at that because it's, a, a it's a really cool level designer apparently as well so you can make your own levels so if somebody like made another level pack yeah. or something and another 50 levels would be like oh that's awesome because really with chess and the different types of pieces See. you can make infinite levels oh yeah right you know hide the end piece way over there have multiple end pieces that you have to get rid of too that's not right. just one maybe and even in out. order like one two three like you, right like, it's, like a pool game almost like oh you have to have to get this one first but it kind of gets in the way uh, the second one yeah. gets in the way, so you have to avoid the second one. And I like yeah. the fact that it falls, so yes. you know if you know chess, you have an advantage. But also, like yeah. there were times where, like, like that last moment with the with the knight, I was like, "That's not how am I going to do this?" And then I was like, "Oh!" And then the, the chat was like, hey, "They fall." I'm like, "Oh, that makes sense." You pop it up down. Yeah. So you have to change your brain. It's like close, but not. And then the the night one is really good for your brain too. If I I feel like I was doing it a bit more random and fast because um you know it's Twitch content. Yeah. But I was but I think that if I were to slow down and really like look at this and think about the movement, it'd actually be really good for your game to sort of wrap your brain around like night movement because night movement is actually one of the weaknesses in a lot of players mm. and having a fun way to practice and sort of go like oh this these are the places they've got to go is really really nice. You could also have the enemy pieces move a little bit it's like oh you have to line up the oh, move yeah, at like... the right time of your move so that it coincides and falls in the right place yeah really really good um night jumper a very simple game um it's it it is a type of game it's called knights knights tour is that what it's called knights tour originally um, very, very cool. Um, good implementation on the Atari 2600. It, yeah. It's totally good. And maybe other pieces as well. Yes, but the knight is kind of the magical piece, you know? Bishop yeah. would be interesting too, because you kind of wrap your brain around it. Yeah. But it would be, it would be like, um, I think that uh, the knight is just kind of one of those. Yeah. And and we only got to a certain level, so we don't know what comes after. Yeah, it, it might, might be. get more and more and more complex. There are buttons to push in later levels, it yeah. said, and, and different stuff. So we only got so far. Um, and then UFO Traffic, the last game. Great concept. Just needs a tiny bit more work. There's some screen jumps. Yeah. There's some impossible 
guys to kill. <laughs> yeah. There's a little, and, you know. And um, uh, just for me, my personal taste, not my favorite genre. So it's I have a bit of resistance oh, on like, it. I like But those. that's that's not a judgment on the game and more my taste. Like yeah. Frogger style stuff, I always get frustrated with. And, <laughs> and it's not, but that doesn't mean that it's a bad game. It's yeah. just not, it's not necessarily like the thing that I, it's not my lane normally, but yeah. I really enjoyed playing it. It's is mm -hmm. really fun. And same with like the, the opening one. But yeah, it's more your style. Yeah, shooters and platformers. I, I actually really really like the first one because it is also a platformer yeah it's like games platformer games where the character can only jump so high or it can do double jumps and instead of double jumps you know there's knights and there's different things guys that can only jump up it's like playing uh there are games like that where you have multiple characters and each of them have different abilities one is like really strong and can push things one can jump really high, one can jump really far, and you have to use them in combination and stack them. It's exactly like that. So they're really smart about like changing that to a chess version yeah. of it. It's like really, really brilliant. And so. one of the things about chess is that like um I think it's interesting because you have games that are tactical in terms of like your thinking and strategy and then you have a performance element which is like your movement abilities you know like in real time can you perform and i think chess is fun mm. because it has no performance it's all tactics yes. and strategy but it's so it's um uh so I, I tend to like games like that but they're like generally slower paced mm. um but it's nice to sort of balance things and play something that's a little more like performance based where you're like i gotta make quick decisions <laughs> in the moment yeah. shit's flying at me you know <laughs> Yeah, but that that's better content for Twitch. Anything that's a bit more performance oriented. Uh, of course, yeah. Uh, so coming up on the show next episode on Tuesday, we're going to be playing Gravitic Mines. Now that we have a uh, Jaguar Pro controller, um, we'll be able to play that properly. It'd probably be the only game. I'll probably take that off of there. Um, let's see. We got. Some world premieres coming up. Elevator Agent from Champ Games. A Secret Homebrew from Champ Games. Uh, Load Runner 2600 from uh, Deanoid. Um, we've got some... They're, they're leaving. <laughs> We're leaving. We got someone outside. <laughs> uh, we've got some interviews coming up. Old Style, Todd Fermansky, Chris Walton from CD, uh, CD-W. And a whole... We're going to be in the car. Yeah, she's going to be in the car. <laughs> so, and a whole bunch of other games that I need to schedule. Yeah, and I'll try to swing by more more this summer. It's, That's great. You said it's kind of like every couple weeks there's sort of a good slot, eh? Yeah, every second Friday yeah. is great. I don't know if that's your speed or not, but we let can me, play by ear. Let me see, because um, um, my partner, she's gone on different... Mm. Um, basically, she's doing this like summer camp where she's uh. 10 days at the camp and then four days in Vancouver. Yeah. So if it lines up with like... Uh, her being gone, I'll, I'll definitely do it. And then Great. if it doesn't, and I'll just let you know what that schedule looks like. But I'd, yeah. I'd love to do some more shows. It's so much fun to be back here on the on awesome. the microphone in the seat. And, <laughs> and every two weeks feels like talking a good... about gaming injustice. Yeah, <laughs> that was just my my talking point for today. I'll come yeah. up with other fun talking oh, points. That's a good one. It just a really can't, good just... one because I'm really interested in that yeah. aspect of gaming and how gaming has changed over and... the years and how it's become more. Well, it's always been about money, but this is like, it's, it's about level. money. It's like, we're going to squeeze these gamers dry as much as they have and get them addicted to the game. Yeah. My... Rather than, oh, you like the game? It sells well. End of story. Yeah. A colleague of mine was who, who works in the gaming industry. They were saying, I really wanted to work in a studio in Vancouver. And they're like, they looked at all the studios and they're like, the problem I had here is almost all the studios in Vancouver are developing mobile games. Of course, that's where the money is. And Why wouldn't they? Yeah, and they're like, that's really sad because it's like I grew up playing these games that I love, but there isn't necessarily the the employment opportunities for them. And like, I just wow. love, I love these old, there's something about maybe the idea of just like the pureness. 10 people in a room figuring out a game, you know? Well, I think if all these big studios go the way of big whale catching uh, mobile game, that creates a vacuum where there's mid-tier and low-tier gaming uh, development that can be done and people will go to that yeah. because it's something that just doesn't exist anymore. Same with the film industry. It's like, oh, 
It's all tent poles now in in um, in it's the like, theaters. Let's that's all you get. Let's ring the fucking Star Wars Harry Potter IP yeah. dry, just man. Right let's just dry. Fucking <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the fucking Harry Star Wars, son's Star nephew. Trek, yeah. <laughs> just people that were in the background out of focus. Let's get Picard. <laughs> yeah. Back, you know. Yeah. Wheel him up. Get Picard another another season. Jimmy Schmitz is here. You <laughs> yeah. Know. So uh, yeah, it's the same happening with movies too. It's like mm-hmm. you either it's a massive movie. Or it's not even promoted, and yeah. and it creates a vacuum for, you know, smaller studios to make films that people can actually associate, not just people punching in VFX in the background. Yeah, so, and so yeah. here's a um, if I could throw out an endorsement game I played recently that was really fun was called V Rising, which is a combo between sort of like action and like Minecraft. It's a more of a sort of on, on an indie game level, and that's one that I had a lot of fun playing. Yeah, is um is is V Rising. I only got past the sort of first act, and it kind of like, but it's a hard fun game, and I got, I got a good like ten hours out of it, which is <laughs> well, that's good, which, which is nice, but yeah. um. Uh, but yeah, and uh, and just to sort of wrap up the points, um, yep. if you're interested in like what I was talking about, a Diablo Immortal, there's so many great videos that break down the monetization I of it. Bet. Like just like money, like amounts and how much you have to pay and how long you'd have to play to get here and the arguments and the yeah. community is sort of doing that so if that's interesting to you guys you can check out those videos nice. the other thing is is that like um and and just just the fun thing is i was so stoked to see vecna lives advanced <laughs> dnd greyhawk module that referenced cool. in stranger things and vecna is one of my favorite antagonists so it's really cool to see the show um and, I, and that's something i will say about stranger yeah. things that i i felt in comparison to all this other stuff that i did yeah. was it's nice to watch a show that's just a show you know it's just it just yep. like i'm um, certainly there's merch surrounding it and there is all that stuff but i really like watching the show I, all, all my complaint there's obviously you can pick a show but yep. i didn't know where it was going and um no that's that's what that's the number one key i think if you can predict it then it's boring right yeah. it's like oh then that's gonna happen that's gonna happen I could. I don't think I could predict any what's going to happen. In yeah, that. And, and so that's that's really good. It's not perfect. I don't no. find it a perfect. The season one was very very good. Um, then two and three kind of dipped down a bit, and four I think is just below season one. And there's all these kind of like um, references to sort of 80s nostalgia and all this stuff. But it's not like, too heavy. No. When it, when it gets too heavy, it's like everything's it's a not reference. like that Wonder oh Woman movie. God. Like it's like it's way. Oh, that was painful. It's, it's it's way nicer. So I just I've been it's I've been enjoying watching an original show and like when I look in the theater, it just is just like I'm leaning more towards trying to watch original stuff. Um, yeah. And so yeah, that's 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 my. Uh, <laughs> My current review. Anyways, we're yeah. off so thanks, the rails. Thanks, thanks for, off the rails. That's fine. So thanks for hanging out with us today. Arena Food, Dan ABC Thrust, Alan the Fur, Spartan 581, Ivory Tower Collections, Cafe Man 2D, um, Madame Masquerade. Thank Alan you. Matt Osimi, if that's how you pronounce it. Thank you for making that game unbelievable. Super, super fun. Yeah, pseudo graphics. I see people were helping us in chat, and I was so That's dialed great. in. That's yeah. great. Honestly, I wouldn't have beaten those games without you guys. Chat's definitely smarter than me. <laughs> Ground Trooper Deanoid. Thank you so much for watching. Charles Wheeland. Erlen needs a shave <laughs> over my dead body. <laughs> it's not happening. It is the decade, I, I of, trim. It's a decade of beards, it might be people. A, I could do a trim, but a, but a full <laughs> shave ain't happening. It's too much, yep. yeah. Thank you all so much for hanging out. Yeah. It's good to be back, and thank you all for making the games. And Yeah, it's great. Like the, the community just keeps on giving and giving and giving, and we're so happy to present these games to everyone and play through them and, and celebrate the developers, and it's great you guys keep showing up. It's, yeah. it's it's a lot of fun. And keep and, keep uh, making games for games. You yeah, know? just like, for game's just, sake. Just enjoy like just doing stuff and yeah. and yeah, thank you all so much for hanging out today. Yeah. And so we'll see you back on Tuesday with Tanya. And so. uh, and I'll see you guys in the near future. Yeah, you bet. See you then. Bye-bye. Bye.